Welcome back to another day off, folks. Come on, Sage, let's go. We got work to do. This is my $500 E46, and if you've seen the channel, you know we are getting this thing fixed up and ready for sale. We have a buyer lined up. His name is Daniel. He lives in Texas, and he's going to be coming out to pick up the car, hopefully within the next week or so. Now, I told him I wanted to fine-tune some items before he did get it. I replaced the inner and outer tie rods last episode, but the steering is not perfect. So I have a used rack and pinion that just came in from eBay, and today we're going to be swapping that into the car and seeing if that fixes our dead spot in the center of the steering wheel. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to rip these nuts out for the outer tie rods real quick. I am ready to get this car sold into Daniel. I'm ready for a new project, folks. All right, so those are DC'd. I'm going to take the whole rack out with the inner and outer tie rods assembled, and I'm just going to break the inners loose and swap them over. So here's our rack. We've got two pieces of hardware that sandwich it up, a bolt and a nut here, bolt and a nut here. Then we have two line connections over here in the back. Those are banjo bolts that plumb the rack, a return and a pressure. And then we need to disconnect the steering column up top. So that's loose. Alrighty, so the next item is we're going to rip that e-torx out of the steering column and get that disconnected. That sits behind the driver's side engine mount. Next step is to break these banjo bolts loose. I'm gonna get a ratchet. That's gonna make this job way easier. Now, I didn't look up repair instructions on this. I'm just going for it. Cause uh, I don't have to drop the subframe, which is really nice. I thought I was gonna have to drop the subframe for this job. So there's our first banjo bolt. Now, these banjo bolts allow fluid to pass and they're also gonna have two ceiling washers, one on this side and one on the rack and pinion side. So make sure you have both of those and order replacements if you don't have a ceiling washer assorted set. So that front bolt is a 22. This rear bolt is a 19. All right, so those two are disconnected. Steering column's disconnected. Next step is just the mounting hardware. Well, that's pretty loose, huh? I'm spinning that bolt. This one's a lot tighter. Well, we got the rack. It's getting replaced anyways. I don't think one not snugged up bolt is gonna be enough to cause this issue. So she's still coming out. I think I'm gonna have to separate that column a little more. Wow, that came out pretty easy. Well, the subframe looks to be in good shape. I don't see any issues to why we would have any play in the subframe there, so that's good news. So everything on these two racks, comparison-wise, is looking good. Um, the only difference is our color and our tags. The rack that came out of the car is a yellow tag, which I believe might be a ZHP rack. You guys are going to need to comment and tell me. Um, but this one's a silver tag. Other than that, the part number for the rack matches, so I'm going to continue with the swap. But if you guys have any more information on the yellow versus silver tag, please feel free to drop a comment. Let me know, and if it's any good stuff, I'll pin it so everybody can see. Banjo bolts out. Okay. 
And I'd say this one on the car feels a lot better than this one. This one has a little bit of play in it, so I'm going to be running this one. Let's cut these to expose. And I'm not seeing any power steering fluid inside of these boots, which is a good sign. Now one of you guys recommended throwing some grease inside the boots. So I'm just gonna put a little dab of grease in there just so it'll get worked in. And before we put this thing up, let's uh, clean up this subframe where the rack sits. Gotta love the smell of brake cleaner, huh? Is it just me or any of you guys love that smell? It's one of my favorites. I don't huff it, I just like the smell. But I also love the smell of gasoline and big block V8 exhaust and lacquer thinner and acetone and gasoline, everything that's bad for you, they just had to make it smell so good. Just looking for good and tight. She ain't going nowhere. Back it back up for the high pressure hose. Now it's time for ceiling washers and banjo bolts. I ordered this ceiling washer kit a long time ago when I worked at the shop and this thing is the best. Uh, if you wanna try to order it for yourself, Here's the part number, um, but basically it just has aluminum ceiling washers of every size and I'll link something like this in the description. What you gotta do is take your ceiling washer off and start looking for a size. Perfect. And I just like to hold the power steering hose, the high pressure hose to maintain its position while I torque it. Next step is getting these outers mounted back up. All right, folks, that is it for the rack and pinion replacement. It actually went pretty smooth. I was pleasantly surprised to not have to drop the subframe down, but Everything went really smooth. Next step, put the wheels on, check for play, give her a drive, and then get it aligned. All right, now we need to get this thing filled up.
I'm going to turn this thing lock to lock real quick just to bleed out any potential air before we fire it up. All right, now that she's running, we can go full lock to full lock. Fluids. Well guys, that went pretty smooth. I say we drive this thing before we get it aligned. Let's take it on the highway, just see how it handles. We'll kind of go from there. Okay. Man, I need some food. Might hit a drive through on the way home or something. Gotta get a quick bite. So far, so good, folks. It is handling really well. Just need to get these wackadoos out the way so I can get up to 80. As far as the handling, I mean, it is much tighter in center and it doesn't want to wander or oversteer. It's not even drifting. Like the alignment is still dialed. The steering wheel is just slightly off, which I could do, but it's best to take it in just to make sure the toe is in good shape. I used to correct steering wheels all the time. You just have to make equal and opposite adjustments on both outer tie rods. You suck one in and you push one out, thus changing the steering but not changing your toe. Guys, the dead spot is definitely gone, so I think this rack and pinion fixed our issue. I need to get it up to 80 and really see if it wants to walk, but I'm feeling pretty confident. Feeling pretty good. Let's give her the juice, huh? Sport mode. Here we go. Oh yeah, she is mint. Yee nice. She is just tracking perfect. No play right there. I could steer with one finger. Let's go get some tacos. Celebratory tacos. Daniel, let's make it happen, dude. She's ready for you. All I got left is to replace the key battery. It doesn't have a battery in it right now. I, uh, I got new key batteries that I have to solder in coming for Friday. Now I'm just gonna wash the car. Hey, good, how you doing, bro? Good. Yeah, I just need two crispy tacos with asada. Just need some lunch. Both, please. Okay. That's it. It's total. Okay, my All right. Okay, thank, thank you, you, man. Thank you, my friend. Let's go. Hell yeah.
Well guys, I would call that a success. This thing is driving way better. I fixed the issue. It is now ready for its new home with Daniel in Texas. I gotta shoot him a text today so he can start coordinating. But other than that, I am real happy with it. Hopefully this, got, hopefully this video gave you guys some insight into this rack and pinion job if you do have to do it for yourself in the future. Well, that's gonna wrap this one up, folks. I got a big old mess to clean up and I'm gonna go enjoy some crispy tacos. I hope you enjoyed or I hope you learned something new. And as always, folks, I will see you on my next day off. Cheers.